Hello everyone, welcome to Tutorials Point. In this video, we are going to talk about living and its characteristics. So, what is living? First, let us discuss. How do we define something as living? You know, to define something as living, we will be saying the objects which exhibit some of the characteristics or specific characteristics of life. So, what are those characteristics? The characteristics are growth, development, responsiveness, adaptation. So, these are some of the characteristics. If some object possesses these characteristics, we can refer it as living object. Now, let us see deep dive into some of these characteristics. So, the first characteristic which we are going to discuss is a very basic characteristics that is growth. What is growth or how do we define growth? Growth is the irreversible increase in mass and number. How growth occurs? Growth occurs because of cells. When cells divide, its mass and number increases as written over here. Now, the important point to be noted here is what do we mean by irreversible? Irreversible means which is which cannot be reversed back in the opposite direction. Let's take an example to understand this. For example, from my childhood, I have grown to this height as you are seeing. Now, even if I want, I cannot go back to that small size of my childhood. So, growth is an irreversible process. Now, growth in animals and plants is in different modes. For example, in animals, growth occurs up to a certain limited time period. But in plants, plants can grow throughout their life. But now you may wonder that when we have a cut in our hand or when some tissues or cells are damaged, we get new tissues. So, can we consider those as growth? No, we cannot consider those as growth because those are simple replacement of damaged cells. Now, in unicellular organism, growth occurs by the similar process of cell division. The characteristic growth we are talking about is can happen in two types. First of all, intrinsic. What is intrinsic growth? If some cells are added intrinsically, that is inside the body, that type of phenomena is known as intrinsic growth. This method is also known as induced suspension. Now, the other type is known as extrinsic growth. Extrinsic growth, as you can, from the name we can make out, that extrinsic means from outside or from the surface. If some added addition is done from outside the surface, it is known as extrinsic and it is also known as accretion. Now, for some examples which follow extrinsic growth are, for example, mountains, glaciers, sand dunes. Now, you understand that these are non-living objects which are also showing growth. Now, if I ask a question that can we, can we say that growth is a defining characteristics for living organisms? No, we cannot because just now we have seen that some of the non-living objects also shows growth. So, growth is not a defining characteristics. The next characteristic which we are going to talk about is reproduction. So, what is reproduction? Reproduction is the formation of new individuals from the existing ones that is from parents to offsprings. Now, this reproduction is not at all an essential characteristic for survival. Why I am saying so? Because if an organism does not reproduce, it is not that it is going to perish or it is going to die. The thing which will happen is that organism's species would not be considered or would not be proliferated on earth anymore. Now, this reproduction can happen in two modes. First of all, asexual reproduction and the second is sexual mode of reproduction. In asexual mode of reproduction, what happens? There is no fusion of male and female gamete. That is, this mode of reproduction is uniparental. Whereas, if we compare to sexual reproduction, this is biparental. That means, two individuals are required and the fusion of male and female gametes is very important for sexual mode of reproduction. Now, some, there are some organisms like mules, worker bees, infertile human couples, they cannot reproduce. Now, you understand these are living organisms we know, but they are unable to reproduce. So, again the question is, can we consider reproduction as a specific or a defining characteristics to define living organisms? No, again the answer is no, as like of growth we discussed. So, growth and reproduction is not a definite, defining characteristics of uh, living organisms. The next characteristic which we are going to talk about is metabolism. So, what is metabolism? Metabolism is the sum total of all the chemical reactions that is happening inside our organism or inside a cell also you can consider. Now, we can say that these chemical reactions we are talking about can happen outside the cells also. We can carry on these chemical reactions inside our test tube. 
Now what we will call them? Shall we call these as living or non-living? Actually we cannot consider them either as living or non-living but we have to say that these are biological reactions that means they are biochemical reactions. Hence metabolism can be considered as a defining characteristics of living organisms because we know because of these type of biochemical reactions the life on earth is possible. Now metabolism can happen in two types. The first type is anabolic reactions as you can see it's a build up reaction that means smaller molecules join together to form bigger complex molecules. So it's an anabolic reaction. A very easy example of this is the formation of uh, glucose from carbon dioxide that by the process of photosynthesis which plants uh, does. The second type is catabolic reactions which is as you can see it's breakdown reaction. For example here what happens complex bigger molecules are broken down into simple soluble substances. Now a very good example is we have carbohydrates for example rice. Now these carbohydrates are large complex molecules. Now these are broken down into smaller molecules called glucose. So it is a breakdown process. The fourth type or characteristics of living organisms we can define is, is the consciousness. Now Consciousness, what is consciousness? Consciousness is the awareness of surroundings and the response to stimuli. Now these stimuli can be of different types. It can be physical, chemical or biological. Now let's take an example. If I touch a hot object, what will happen? I'll remove my hand instantaneously. Why did I do so? This is because my sense organs sense something hot and it has been suggested by the brain to remove our hand. Now in plants and animals, this is of a bit different type. Animals have got uh, specific sense organs to sense these type of stimuli but plants do not have so but we know plants can also respond to stimuli for example plants we have seen plants to bend towards light so this is also a kind of response to stimuli now we have as it, we have discussed that this stimuli can be physical chemical or biological now can we consider consciousness as a defining characteristics of living organism yes we can because we know non-living organisms cannot fill or response to this stimuli. So in this video what we have studied, we have studied about the different characteristics of to define a living organism and the conclusion is metabolism and consciousness are the two defining characteristics of living organisms. I hope you have enjoyed the video. Thank you.